I guess I'm kind of a glutton for punishment. Last night, I bow hunted at home for deer in North Dakota where I live in, I don't know, it was probably 8.30 by the time I got out of the blind. We drove all night, 13 hour drive. We just got into Wyoming. We're gonna head out and hunt right away, but it's a long trip to get down here, but it's something I try to do every year. I just love this place. You know, whether I'm elk hunting, mule deer hunting, just a lot of cool scenery, meet a lot of great people. And obviously it's just a classic Western big game hunting that so many hunters dream about. So I feel lucky and fortunate to be able to come down here every year. Passion for the Hunt is brought to you by Shields, Crestliner Boats, Benelli Firearms, Federal Premium Ammunition, North Dakota Tourism, Primos Hunting, Long Haul Trucking, I think spot and stock and mule hunting covers a whole range of emotions in the sense that the highs are high, the lows are low. You're going to find moments that are exhilarating. You're going to find moments of just absolute disappointment. And with mule deer hunting, if something can go wrong, it will. You know, missing animals, you know, blowing stalks, having the wind shift, you know, that's all a part of mule deer hunting. But when it all comes together, there's just something magical about it. That deer's walking to the right here. If that deer keeps moving, we might be able to close the distance. Yeah, if we can get him just to peek over the edge. That's a challenge with the mule deer, is there's always more than one. Because right now that deer's perfect, he's facing that way. That that deer wasn't there, we could probably slide it up and get him up on 60 yards pretty quick. Yeah, real easy. We could just get down right there and we could just I tell you what, you know, we've seen these two bucks from a distance, we close the distance. These deer went right down to the bottom of a gulch and it just, it was just the ideal setup for stock. There's a wore out cattle trail right next to the gulch where you're able to slide along it real quiet without making any noise. It was absolutely perfect. At one point we ranged one deer. The closest buck was 30 yards. The buck that we wanted to target was 40 yards away. They were in the brush, but everything was perfect. 
and then the wind just let up and swirled and it was over. And it's amazing how wind shifting and how thermal shifting can absolutely ruin your day. That was looking so perfect for so long. I think the wind swirled right there. Yeah, now it just died down. Yeah. Got dead quiet for a second. Yeah, well, that's mule deer hunting, huh? <laughs> See how, how dry it is in this country. And so in these river bottoms, they'll irrigate alfalfa. It's interesting, even with the irrigation, they only get two cuts of alfalfa off this a year. But we're gonna set up in this tree stand this evening, and in the evenings, these people there come out of these river bottoms. And they love this alfalfa. There's already some antelope out here. Kind of a neat opportunity whenever you can hunt meal deer out of a tree, so we're gonna try it here tonight. sitting here that long and first meal here of the night just showed up so that can't be a bad sign it's still pretty early and it's fairly hot it's got to be got to be well over 70 degrees i've seen this before though where this will just load up with deer you know in a felfa field like this you know you see a hundred deer out here in the evening size buck on the other side of the river. Everything's been on the far side of the field, so we need these deer to come a lot closer. We've got more deer spilling into the alfalfa here. Quite a few does. Saw some bucks on the other side of the river. I don't know if they'll come over here. There's a there's a buck on the very far side of this field. Like I can't tell quite how big it is, but it might be a respectable deer. I can't see what it's got on for fronts, but. Pheromone action. Running out of shooting light. It was definitely worth a try, but we never had a deer come within 250 yards of us, but kind of losing our wind to our wind starting to swirl back this way which I've watched deer before come right behind this tree and come right out here but we never saw a deer come out on this side of the field tonight. You know I know people that think mule deer are stupid how hard can it be to kill a mule deer you know you drive down the road and a mule deer stands in the ditch 50 yards away but I tell you what these mule deer are built for the environment that they live in. You know, and these mule deer, especially the bucks, the big bucks, you know, they just know how to avoid people. They know how to avoid predators. A lot of times they're dealing with multiple sets of eyes, dealing with multiple noses, and one deer gets up and bounces away, and all the other deer in the area get up and bounce away with that deer. I mean, it's just, you know, you're not just trying to sneak up on one deer. Usually you're trying to slide in within, you know, range of several deer, and that's what makes mule deer hunting such a challenge.
So I remember first laying binoculars on this buck. I mean, standing right out in the middle of the field. It's daylight. It's probably an hour before dark. I couldn't believe it. I mean, this buck was just, just a beautiful deer. And you know, then obviously the challenge is, okay, how do we get a shot? How do we get in range when you've got a buck out in the middle of a wide open field surrounded by does? And so, I'll tell you what, we, we tried working our way around that field. We tried cutting the deer off. We tried guessing which way the deer was gonna walk to. It just never panned out. I mean, it just seemed like this deer knew what we were thinking and was one step ahead of us. You know, and one thing I think I can safely say about mule deer, if there is such a thing, is that when these deer don't realize they're getting hunted, they're a lot easier. Once these deer know that you're after them, it's like a switch goes off. And I tell you what, these deer, <laughs> I mean, they get so much more difficult. And so we probably should have known once we bumped that deer out of the field, that deer ran up the side hill. And once, it, once you get to that point, it's like all senses hyper alert. I mean, you know, that deer, was always a step ahead of us and you know at one point you know we were trying to get above the deer we we're trying to cover a lot of ground across the flat bench on top thought we could keep up with this deer next time we see the deer it's 200 yards away sneaking up a gulch over the next ravine and you know one step ahead <laughs> i guess that's mule deer hunting i mean that's mule deer hunting in a nutshell sometimes And so we spot these three bucks and I guess just to back up, what's amazing about this is we glassed that coolie maybe a half hour previous. We never saw a deer, never saw a single deer. Half hour later, there's three bucks standing on the side hill. And that's why it's so important to be patient. We keep going back to that in the sense you can glass an area, the sun changes, a deer shifts, a deer stands up and all of a sudden, boom, there he is. First, you know, we don't really know how we're gonna attack this and so we just sit and wait and watch while the deer go down the draw they go across a kind of a big drainage they go to a creek get some water and we can see that they're heading out towards what looks like an alfalfa field all we could do is try to get ahead of them and try to cut them off You know, and so looking back, you know, we had the right idea. We had a pretty good idea where those deer were going to cross and where those deer were going to come into the alfalfa. But, you know, we just couldn't get close enough. You know, the closest deer is 100 yards. You know, it just wasn't a, a shot opportunity, but you're going to try and fail a lot with mule deer hunting. That's just the way it is. I mean, you're not going to have a high batting average where you look at all kinds of deer and stalk one time and shoot a deer. I mean, that happens. But you know, a lot of times, you know, you're going to blow some opportunities, or some opportunities you're going to get in position. They're just not going to develop in front of you, and that's you know, that's mule deer hunting. You know, I think a lot of hunters love mule deer hunting just because you're out in this wide open, beautiful country, you're walking, you're glassing, you're moving, you know, you're doing something all the time in the sense of spot and stock hunting, you know, you're looking and you're waiting and you're watching. And, you know, obviously we get on some good vantage points and spend a lot of time glassing over what we feel are good areas and having some patience that way. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you cover a lot of miles, you put some wear and tear on your boots and, you know, you're doing it in beautiful country. I think that's the mystique of mule deer hunting.
got plenty close to that deer, but that deer shifted over. We thought the deer was going to be out in front of us more. Nice yeah. buck. Yeah, it shifted to our south a little bit and just kept his head down where we couldn't see him. Got within probably 60 yards and he lifted his head up on all this and go around and make another stop. Yep. Wind's kind of still blowing, not in our favor as much right here. But just wait for the thermals to kick in. Yeah, we just make a little sneak around and come back into them. So. Yeah, let them settle down a little bit. Yeah. There's our wind blowing that way, so just sneak, sneak down and around it this way and come back in on it. And I got to give credit to Tyson for the spot. Those antlers are just sticking up above the grass, just maybe this much antler on one side sticking up. And you couldn't even tell it was an antler until the deer was like, it, it shook flies, it, it just shook its head. And when those tines moved, Tyson happened to catch it and he saw that buck and we got him pinned down. And I tell you what, I could not believe our luck in the sense that we had just made contact with this deer maybe an hour earlier. The deer had settled down, the deer was in its bed. The deer had no idea we were there. The wind was actually right, the thermals were actually right. Just the way the terrain was laid out and the way the bushes were, it was just a perfect situation to get on that deer. And I guess it's just a typical thing where if you can spot the deer before the deer spots you, obviously you have a lot more of an advantage. like a good hit, could you see? Look like a good one. Dumped over a little bit. Oh, he starts slowing down there at the end and was limping on that right side. Oh, okay, I got him right, right in here. Yeah, sound like a good hit. Yeah, let's go find the bolt. Good job. There's lots of blood up here. Awesome. 
Wow. Nice buck. Tyson, that is a stud of a buck. That is a stud of a buck. That is a cool buck. Yeah. Eye guards, that is cool, huh? Kicker coming off. This compares with me, sweet deer. Yeah, there's a lot I of like, nice bucks in this country. This is a phenomenal yeah. area for mule deer, but yeah. dude, this is a stud of a buck anywhere. That extra right there, pretty sweet. Give him some nice character. Yeah, well, it's amazing how sometimes things just come together. I didn't think we were gonna get another crack at this deer. We saw a deer, we stopped to glass that deer, and then we happened to see this buck bedded down in the bushes. We would have never stopped to look at that other buck. We would have never seen this deer. Sometimes you just get lucky with hunting. Awesome buck. All right. Thank you, bud. Yeah. A, Thank you. What a Appreciate great week. It. Sweet deer.